As leaders, you should not only imagine the future, but imagine it with confidence. Imagine it with conviction, even though future is unknowable. Why so? Let me illustrate that with the Apollo 13 movie. Those of you who have seen the movie, you remember a scene in Apollo 13 where the director of flight operation goes to the chalkboard and draws this picture? Here is planet Earth, this is the moon, and here is Apollo 13. It's about 200,000 miles away from Earth. A minor glitch has developed in Apollo 13. It's starting to lose oxygen. It's starting to lose power. So the challenge that they face is, how are they going to bring the three astronauts safely back to Earth? And very quickly, everybody realizes there is only a finite amount of power that's left in the command module. And that power can only take the command module up to there. This is an objective, undeniable fact. As you can tell, there is a bit of a gap there, is it not? Those of you who saw the movie, do you remember the strategic intent of the flight operations? Who is clearly the CEO of that mission? If you recollect, his intent was, we will bring the three astronauts home with time to spare. It's not even going to be a panic operation. Again, think about what is the probability he could do that? Maybe 5%? Clearly, this is a very, very difficult thing to do. There is a good 95% chance he could fail. Yet, the statement is made with 100% confidence. I want you to imagine two Apollo 13 organizations. In one organization, the CEO says, we will bring them home alive with time to spare. In another organization, the CEO says, let's try our level best to bring them home. The job is the same job in both organizations. 95% difficult thing to do. Yet the two statements are different. I want you to reflect whether there will be a difference in the employees in these two organizations in terms of their engagement, their excitement, their empowerment. You will certainly agree with me. The organization where the CEO says, we will bring them home alive with time to spare, think about the confidence CEO has in the competence of those employees. Those employees are going to say, I'm engaged, I'm in it. Contrast that with an organization where the CEO says, let's try our level best to bring them home. In fact, the game is over even before you start it. Because trying itself looks like a reasonable objective. In fact, failure is accepted as a reasonable option. Therefore, the game is lost even before you start it. In one organization, there is positive thinking. In another organization, there is limited thinking. In fact, Apollo 13 is a very good movie to see, but it is a great movie to see for box one, two, three thinking. In fact, a lot of top management teams watch that movie and then analyze it frame by frame. What can I learn from this frame about box one, two, three? How do I create the future while managing the present? How do I forget in an organization? That's not easy. Where do these box three ideas come from? How do I allocate resources to test hypothesis in box three? Let me just highlight a few things from the Apollo 13 movie. Right after the CEO says, failure is not an option. We will bring them home alive with time to spare. The CEO did two things, which I thought were very powerful symbolisms. The first thing the CEO did was he took the flight plan of Apollo 13 and kind of tore that flight plan in front of the organization and threw it into the garbage. And he didn't say a word. I want you to think about what was he trying to communicate? Clearly, that was all about box two. Let's just destroy our old corporate manuals the old assumptions. The second thing 
the CEO did was also powerful symbolism. We must do this. We can do this. I am really excited to bring the three astronauts home. But if anyone in my team does not believe in this intent, I want that person to leave now. This ship is sailing in five seconds. I don't want nays naysayers on my ship. Again, I want you to think about how important it is for CEOs to get only people who buy into that intent on the team. Think about what happens if just one person is skeptical about the direction where you are heading. The problem with that one person is they will begin to inflict the rest of the crew. Because box two, box three is a difficult journey. It is a tough journey. When you are trying to do Fosbury flop, initially you are not going to succeed. And every skeptic will feed off of that failure. Every time you fail in an experiment, people will say, I told you so. We should have just stuck to scissors. Who will try the flop and break your brains? Right after he says, failure is not an option, we will bring them home safe, they go through a series of moves in bringing the three astronauts home, which again illustrates two powerful principles behind box two, box three thinking. The first principle is every one of the moves that they make in bringing the three astronauts home is either a horizon two move, adjacency move, or a horizon three move, entirely new business model. So my first point is, if you want to get to the future, you have to engage in Horizon 2, Horizon 3 moves. You cannot become a leader in the future by only closing performance gap. You also have to address the opportunity gap. Let me give you one or two examples of the initiatives that they undertake in bringing the three astronauts home. You see, everybody agrees there is only a finite amount of power that's left in the command module. And that can only take the command module for a short distance. So the entire crew decides that they will use the power that's left in the command module for the last leg of the journey. Therefore, they shut down the power in the command module. Power is down, computer is down, everything is down. That means human beings can no longer live in the command module. So they temporarily move the three astronauts into the lunar module. Now, you see, lunar module was designed to land on the moon. That means the original plan was only two astronauts will land on the moon and one astronaut will stay behind in the command module. Therefore, when you put three astronauts into the lunar module, which was only designed for two, the carbon dioxide buildup is too high in the lunar module. Again, those of you who saw the movie, that is the first challenge that they face. How do I contain the carbon dioxide in the lunar module, which is 200,000 miles away from Earth? You can't send spare parts out there. What are you going to do? And if you can't solve that problem, the three astronauts are going to die. And we have no backup plan because we have already shut down the power in the command module. Again, the way they solve that problem is a box three move out-of-the-box solution. In fact, every initiative that they undertake in bringing the three astronauts home is a Horizon 2 or a Horizon 3 move. None of them is business as usual in box 1. Let's take a look at the last challenge that they face, which is they have to escape from Moon's gravity and enter Earth's gravity. Now, the original flight plan incorporated 200 extra pounds in the command module. Why? Because we are supposed to have landed on the moon and picked up 200 pounds of moon rock. We didn't land on the moon. Therefore, the command module doesn't have the 200 extra pounds. And without the 200 extra pounds, if you follow the original flight plan, you're going to skid up the Earth's orbit. And there is no way you can add 200 extra pounds now. Again, they come up with a box three, out of the box solution in escaping moon's gravity and coming into Earth's gravity. So my first observation is, if you want to be a leader in the future, you must close opportunity gap today, just as you're closing performance gap today. 
the second point that I want to drive home with the Apollo 13 movie is every one of the box three breakthrough idea came from the frontline organization. Not one of them was suggested by the chief executive officer. 